Hi, my name is As from Reckless Desserts. Uh, we are a small patisserie, artisan patisserie based uh, near Wales in Somerset. Um, our shop is located at Rookery Farm near Binnegar. So today we are going to make, make a uh, classic French dessert called a Paris Bresse. So there it is in its final state. Um, we have here a <coughs> choux pastry ring with uh, some toasted hazelnuts and a praline mousseline cream. So first, first things first, uh, we need to uh, add the ingredients in the pan. So there's a very small amount of ingredients. That's why it's so classic, so, so simple to make. So we're going to make the choux pastry. The choux pastry um, is composed of some water, 120 grams of water, some whole milk, 60 grams of whole milk, a pinch of salt, a tablespoon of sugar, which is about 7 to 10 grams of sugar, and some unsalted butter. We've got 100, uh, 80 grams sorry, of, um, of uh, unsalted butter that we are going to um, bring to the boil into uh, the saucepan. Right, so the liquid is coming to the boil now. As you can see, I am going to put it off the stove and I will sieve the flour over it. It's uh, critical to sieve the flour so you don't end up with lumps because once you've got lumps in a hot liquid, it's very difficult to break them up. So very, very important, sieving the flour. So here I've got 100, 100 grams of flour and I'm stirring it um, to mop up and to soak up all the, uh, to create a little dough. And then the next stage is to go back on the stove to dry it out, to dry out this dough a little bit. Drying it out will allow us to add the eggs at, on the next stage. If it's not dried out properly, what tends to happen, you'll end up with a very runny mix and it will be not holding its shape when you pipe in it. So I'm back on the stove, I'm lowering the heat um, to um, a medium heat and I'm going to be stirring it for a good two to three minutes um, to, to dry out this dough as much as I can. If it does start to catch at the bottom of the pan, just move the pan away from the heat and keep stirring it. It's a nice little workout actually. <laughs> right, as you can tell, it's starting to catch at the bottom. Keep, you know, keep stirring it quite vigorously. And then if it does, it does just pull it out of the side. Normally for this recipe, I will be drying it out for a couple of minutes, maybe two to three minutes. This is quite a critical stage in the process of making choux pastry. A lot of um, mistakes are made at this stage when the dough is not dried enough. Um, not so then the next stage when you add the eggs, you find that you can't add all the required eggs for the recipe. Right, this is done now. We are going to go on to the, the, the next stage, which is uh, the additions of the eggs. So the addition of the eggs, we're doing it in a mixer for ease, I suppose. Right, so we've, um, we've, we've dried the dough in a pan and we are now going to transfer into the, the mixing bowl uh, and we'll be adding the eggs to it um, a little at a time. So, I'm mixing the uh, dough for a couple of minutes again to allow for the steam to come out before I add my eggs. And um, as you can see, there's steam coming out of the bowl. Um, and I've got my eggs here, which I'm going to be adding. So I've got, I'm using liquid eggs uh, because of commercial um, environment and it's a lot more practical. Uh, but free range eggs, um, shell eggs is absolutely fine, obviously, as well. So I'm pouring the eggs into the mixer as a now. And I'm going to pour half of it to start with uh, and let it mix until everything comes together. Right, so the mixing is done. I'm happy with the consistency of my dough. I am going to transfer it into a piping bag. But first, I need to prepare my trays. <coughs> I'm using a, a 12 mil diameter plain nozzle for the shoe, uh, for the shoe rings. And I use a little bit of spray, fat spray, ever so slightly, quite light. And a, a light dusting of flour. And this is really just to be able to um, put a print or a mark, if you will, on the tray 
so I've got a guide to pipe my rings. So I'm going to do little marks on the tray like so. And I want to give them as much space as possible on the tray really. Uh, you, don't want them to, you don't want them too close, um, otherwise they might touch each other. So on here I've got eight on each tray, eight. The piping bag, a little trick, a little twist and then push it to inside the nozzle so that would secure the uh, stop the pastry, the, the door falling through. So like so. So grab my, pass, my piping bag, my door. So it's quite a firm door. So I'm going to do eight on each tray basically, or they about. So I've got my mark on here, I pipe it. Another one here. Oops. If you, if you accidentally pipe it badly, like I just did, it's not the end of the world. All you have to do is scrape it off, put it back into the bowl, and start again. So the next step is adding the nuts. So a little bit of egg wash, slightly brushed on top, not too heavy, but just enough so we can stick some of those hazelnuts. And use the brush to um, shape the rings if, if you need to. Obviously, if you were to do a large, a large primary rest, you will obviously make it about seven inch in diameter. And instead of having one ring of pastry, you'll have three. So you'll do a double and then a single one on top. And again, process the same egg wash, a little bit of a nibbed hazelnut on top. If you don't have nibbed hazelnut, you can use flaked almonds um, as an alternative as well. I like ne ne um, nibbed hazelnut myself, so I just put nibbed hazelnut. Okay, so now they're gonna go in the oven for 20 minutes at 160 degrees and then another 15 minutes at 120. This is the drying stage of the baking process and it's critical because you want a lovely crispy uh, shoe pastry ring. Uh, if you don't do that, what tends to happen as they cool down, the moisture within the shoe will just make the shell soft and not very nice to eat. So for the second part of the recipe while our uh, shoe rings are baking, we're going to make a pudding cream mousseline. So essentially, it's a crème pâtissière flavored with praline. Uh, praline is um, this beautiful, flavorful paste. So this is a blend of almonds and hazelnuts. And essentially what it is, is some toasted hazelnuts that have been blended uh, with some icing sugar and turned into paste into a food processor. Uh, if, however, you can get these um, online or some specialist shops. Um, so we got, in this recipe, 240 grams of whole milk. 130 gram of praline, we've got one whole egg, one egg yolk, some gelatin powder. So the gelatin powder, I use it because it's convenience. If you don't have access to gelatin powder, you can use gelatin leaves. In this case, you use two leaves. Whole milk, I use the whole milk again here. This is to hydrate or soak the gelatin. And some corn flour and some caster sugar. On the second phase of the recipe, we will then, once we've cooked our crème pâtissière and it's chilled, cooled down, we will then whip some 35% uh, fat cream and we will add the dark rum. So the dark rum, uh, you can add kirsch if you prefer, but I like the dark rum because I believe the dark rum uh, promotes and enhance the flavor of the hazelnut more further and give you this really like lovely, uh, nutty uh, flavor delivery. So once this is swelled, I will then uh, add it on to the crème pâtissière at the end of the cooking. So right now, what we're going to do is we are going to put the milk into the saucepan. A little tip, I put a little pinch of sugar into the milk. So what that does, it will stop the milk catching the pan and I'll give you a quick whisk. And then I'm mixing the other ingredients. So in, in goes the eggs. The egg yolk, the remaining of the sugar, and the corn flour. And all I'm doing now is mixing the 
mixture until everything is nicely incorporated. The milk is um, coming to the boil. As soon as it comes to the boil, I will uh, add it to the uh, egg mixture. Right, it's come to the, coming to the boil. Oh, and these are the sugar being ready, so I'm going to take them out of the oven in two seconds. Okay, so back on the stove with the custard. And I need to cook this corn flour for two to three minutes. So you want it at a medium heat, um, not too hot, otherwise it will start to, to curdle very quickly, So even though it's got corn flour. So you want it, you know, three quarters of the maximum power of your stove or medium heat. And it's a case of whisking it vigorously, continuously, uh, while this is thickening up. As you can, you can tell right now, it's starting to thicken. And it's quite important to cook this uh, creme pâtissière um, for two to three minutes. You really want to, you know, get the starch flavor out, really. You just want the starch to do its job as a thickening agent, not as a flavor agent. If you don't have corn flour, you can use uh, standard flour um, as well. Um, even more so important to cook this flour right out and, you know, recommend two to three minutes uh, on the stove. Now off the stove, I'm gonna add the, the, the soaked gelatin or the swollen gelatin. As you can see, it's absorbed moisture, the liquid, the milk. So I'm scooping all of that in, whisking this in. So with the heat from the creme pot, it's melting the gelatin. And at this stage, I won't go back on the stove. I just add the creme, um, I just add the pralin paste uh, onto it, and then I will let it cool down uh, before we're moving on to the next steps, which is folding it into the whipped cream to give you that halin muslin. You can do a twist on it if you, if you f uh, like the idea of uh, Nutella. At this stage, you can add some uh, chocolate and you'll have your chocolate Gian Jujar style or Nutella flavor style of cream. Um, but today we're just doing the classic French uh, halin muslin for a Paris breast. I love the smell. I'm gonna transfer this onto a tray to cool down. And that's it, so I'm gonna put a cover of cling film, let it cool down, and then once it's completely cooled down, we leave it half an hour at room temperature on the cold surface, or if you've got space in the fridge, put it in the fridge, and then we'll be back to assemble and finishing the cream. So while my cream is cooling down, I'm gonna whip the cream which is the second part of this uh, uh, palin muslin. And uh, whilst the cream is whipping, I'm gonna get my shoe rings ready. So I'm gonna cut them in half and then uh, we'll be ready to go and, and then assemble the finished product. So when whipping cream, uh, some, some people like to whip their cream really quickly and you know, put it on the machine full blast. Uh, I don't recommend it because when you do that, the structure of your uh, cream is a little bit unstable. Uh, by whipping it fast, you bubble, without going into too much into the science bit of whipping cream, but the, the size of your bubble will be very inconsistent. If you're whipping it at a medium speed, you're uh, creating a stable structure whereby your air bubble within your cream, or whipped cream, are more or less the same size, therefore giving you a more stable uh, cream, whipped cream. So if you pipe then this cream, it will stay put for a much longer time and the texture and the muffle will be a lot better than if you were to work in it full speed. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> so while the cream is uh, whipping, I am gonna cut these guys in half. And essentially, this is the sort of texture you'll be looking at. Very aerated, lovely crisp, crisp pastry. Um, and then just put them back on the tray. As I said earlier, it's very critical and a lot of people don't realize when you do cook your true pastry, it's very important to have this drying stage uh, on the baking process. So here at the, our, on our oven, we've got uh, the flexibility of having obviously uh, different temperature program into the, the oven. So just to recap, on the baking profile, I put them in 160 for 20 minutes and a further 12 minutes at 120. Uh, if you have an oven that has got a form of steam trap or uh, a, a, a steam door, you can then flick the steam door open to let the steam 
uh, escape the oven. If you don't have an oven that's got a steam trap, what I recommend is at the end of the first uh, baking period, just open the door to release some of the moisture and, and steam out of the oven, and that'll give you a similar result. But it's critical not to miss that part because, as I said, the share will not be nice and crisp as it should be. So that second part of the baking is critical, in my opinion. So just checking the consistency of the cream. Um, and to, to know when the cream is ready, what we're looking for is a soft peak, um, as it's called in the, in, in, the, in the industry. So when you take uh, your cream with your whisk, you want to see that kind of a soft, big uh, drop. This is when the cream is ready, basically. Anything firmer than that might not give you the, the required results. So this is a really soft, um, consistency peak. That's it. That's exactly what we're looking for. We call it also a soft beak, as in a beak from a bird. Right, so um, our creme pâtissière, print creme pâtissière is cooled down and ready to be uh, folded into our, our whipped cream. So for that, I'm just going to grab a bowl and then transfer it into the bowl. When you're cooling the creme pâtissière, it doesn't, you know, it, as long as it's at room temperature, it's perfect. Um, any colder, the gelatin will start setting and it does, you know, uh, affect the, uh, the end results as such. So, um, yeah, it's cooling it down in a fridge, but keep an eye that it doesn't stay in the fridge too long, essentially. So, I've got the, um, the creme pâtissière. I'm going to add to it the cream and the rum. So first the rum and then the cream. The rum, dark, dark rum. I can really smell the hazelnuts coming through now with the rum, the addition of the rum. It's beautiful. So it's nice and smooth, as you can see. Okay, a piping bag, nozzle, ready. And now we can fold in the whipped cream. So folding is essentially mixing two mixture with different texture. Uh, when folding whipped cream into a creme pat, you start off by putting a little bit of um, um, whipped cream to relax the creme pat because it will be otherwise it will be too firm, um, too, too, too firm into the mousse. So you kind of like the idea is to bring the texture of the creme pat to a similar texture consistency than the whipped cream. And then I can then transfer my creme pat into my cream. And then folding, what you want to do is as you spin the ball, you dig in to the center gently. until everything is well incorporated into each other's. So that's the end result. A panin muslin cream. So now we're gonna fill the shoe rings with the piping bags. There is no need to fill the bag right up. I think when filling the piping bag, it's how much you feel comfortable with, but also especially when you do a, a, a cream, uh, something that's quite delicate like a cream, there's, it's important to not remember that the longer it stays in your hand, the warmer it will become, and the warmer it will become, the runnier it will become. So I've only filled up the bag to about half, I've got another half in there, and by the time I'm done with that, the cream will still remain cold enough to pipe. So layering up my uh, shoe rings, if your pastry hasn't developed as much as that and you find that perhaps you know there is quite a bit of clumpiness or quite a bit of dough in the middle you can pull out the dough um, to allow for more filling to, uh, to, to, to be uh, uh, inside but I'm quite happy with the texture and the airiness of the product so I'm just going to crack on and uh, pipe the uh, filling straight on, uh, straight on it so um, really simple a few dots around the rim Pulling upwards as you go, making sure you are piping inside 
the ring as much as possible so you don't end up with uh, pockets of air. And then it's just a case of putting the, the lid back on. So final, final, final touch, or finishing touch as they call it, a little dusting of uh, icing sugar just to, um, to make this uh, lovely Paris Brest uh, a real classic uh, treat. And there you go, so this is, this is my favorite all time childhood classic, the Paris Brest. Um, shoe rings with a hazelnut praline uh, mousseline. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.